In this video, we're going to write our own function. It will be a function that takes a vector of numbers as input and computes and displays some basic descriptive statistics of that output. It's admittedly not the most interesting or the most useful function ever created. It's not going to win any MATLAB awards, but it will teach you a lot about how to set up and write functions. So the goals of this video are to learn how to create a function, understand how the help text of a function works, uh, you'll be able to work with inputs and create function outputs, and I'll show you how to check whether a potential variable name already exists. So let's get started. It can be intimidating to look at a blank MATLAB file, so let's start by writing down a brief description of what we want this function to do. So this function should compute the mean and the sum and the standard deviation of a list of numbers. So let's see, this function should compute the mean, sum, and standard deviation of a list of input numbers. And then we want to display those statistics and output them in a variable. So now we don't have a function yet, but we have started by filling in a, a brief overview of what we want this function to do. Now let's start organizing the function. We need a section to do quality control checks in the input. We need a section that will compute the basic statistics. We need a section that will display the results in the command window. And finally, we need a section that will prepare the output into one vector. To me, each of these sections feels like a separate part of the function. And therefore, I'm going to put each of these into different cells. So we have one cell for uh, input checks, and then another cell to compute the basic statistics, and then another cell to display the results in the command window, and finally a cell to prepare the output. Now I will write more detail about what each cell should do. For the input check, the input must be numeric. That means it must contain numbers. So we need to check that the input is numeric. And, and let's say that the input should be at least three elements long, and it should be a vector, not a matrix. So at least uh, three elements should be a vector not a matrix. Actually, this is must be. All right, so that's enough input checks. For the basic statistics, I want to compute the mean, the sum, and the standard deviation in separate lines. So here I'll write compute the mean, compute the sum, compute the standard deviation. To display the results in the command window, I'm going to use the disk function. So let's write that here. Use disk function to print results in the command window. And for the output, we just need to make sure that all basic statistics are listed it, let's say concatenated, concatenated in a row vector. Now we start fleshing out the function. All functions start with a function line. The function line defines the output name. So let's output stats. The name of the function, maybe we call this uh, basic stats, and the inputs. And maybe I'll call the input input. Now, I mentioned in a previous video about variable naming that you should avoid using variable names that are existing functions. So the question is, how do you know if a variable name that you want to use is already reserved for an existing function? 
One way is to use the which function. So you type which and then the name of the variable that you're thinking of using. And if MATLAB says stats not found, then you know that the word stats is not used by any other variable. It's not used by any function. So this is OK. Now we can try this again for input. And it turns out that input is a built-in function. And here is the location on my computer where that, where that file is found. So we have to give this a different name. How about, for example, invar? And that doesn't sound like it would be a function name, but I can check anyway. Invar. Yep, not found. So now we're good. This seems like a good time to save the file. It's always a good idea to save your files regularly. So I type control enter, or you can click on editor and then file save. And by default, MATLAB is going to suggest a file name consistent with the name of the function, which is generally a good idea. I'd like to point out that so far in creating this function, we have yet to write a single piece of code. All we've done, well, except for uh, defining the function line. So far, all we've done is create this broad strokes outline of what the function should do and when it should do it. That's important because that will help you minimize mistakes and make your code more streamlined and more efficient. And still, before moving on to write code, I recommend putting a detailed description of what the function does, what inputs it expects, and what it gives as outputs. This should be clear and concise because this is going to become the help text that is displayed when someone wants to learn how to use this function. First, I write the way the function works, and then I'll write a brief description of what the function does. So actually, the way this works is just by copying and pasting this function line. And now I'll write a brief description. This function computes the mean, sum, and standard deviation of a numeric input vector. Note that this is comment that I wrote for myself. This is to help me understand what this function does. But I don't need that anymore now that I'm starting to uh, flesh out this function. This, these comments here, just under the function line, this will turn out to be the help text that prints in the command window when someone types help basic stats. So we need some more useful information for users. In particular, people who want to use this function need to know what inputs it expects. So the input invar, and that is an input vector, must be a vector containing only numbers, at least three numbers. So in this case, there's only one input. Otherwise, uh, if there were more inputs, I would have listed them here. So this would be the you know, input 2, but there isn't another input. And we also need to tell our users about the output. And the main output is this variable stats. And that is a three element vector containing mean, sum, and the standard deviation. And then it's always good to um, sign your functions. If you have a website, I recommend listing your website or GitHub site or Google Code site instead of your email address. And that's because if you have your email address in this code and your code makes it online, then some bot who's, uh, which is searching the internet for email addresses to harvest and send spam to, that bot could pick up your email address. So. If you write your website address and your email address is on your website, a human could find your email address, but a spam harvesting bot is unlikely to find it. So I'll save this again. I'd like to point out again how much effort and time and organization I've already put into this function without actually writing any code for the function.
Again, the more time you spend thinking about and organizing your functions before you start writing the code, the more likely you are to write clean, efficient, and fast code with no mistakes and no bugs. Okay, but now it's really time to write the rest of this function. Normally, we'd start here with the input checks. Uh, however, checking the inputs and doing quality control requires using control functions that I haven't told you about yet. So for now, let's leave this part of the code blank, and we'll assume that the input is correct. Then we move on to the basic statistics cell. The function to compute the average of a set of numbers is called the mean. So we would write mean uh, and then in var, like this. And now we should give this a name because we will need to use this variable again. In principle, you could call it mean, you could call the variable mean, but this is a terrible idea because mean is the name of the function. So maybe I'll call it my mean. Same for sum, I'll call this my sum equals sum in var. And then for the standard deviation, I'll call this my standard dev equals std, or is it stdev? No, it's std in var. So now we have uh, this cell finished. We compute the basic statistics. And now I'm going to display the results using the disp function. And I'll use square brackets in order to concatenate different strings. So the mean of the input is. Now here, I want to display the number, but I need to display the number as characters, not as numbers. So I need to use this function num to string to convert the number of the mean to the string that corresponds to the mean. So let's see, same deal for sum and standard deviation. So this is going to be the sum and standard deviation. And then I have to remember to change these. This is called my standard. Now notice I'm going to use tab complete here. So I've already filled out part of this variable name. And then I use tab, and MATLAB figures out that it corresponds to this, and it finishes the rest. All right, so that's enough for this section. I'll save again. And finally, I want to put the output, which I called stats, I think. Yeah. Stats equals, and then I'm just going to concatenate these three. All right, and there we go. So now MATLAB knows to export this uh, variable here. Now we can type help basic stats. And you see the help text that prints out is exactly all of this text that I've written in here. Now we can test our function. We'll say uh, stats equals basic stats, and let's do something simple like 1 through 5. Here I called the function. This was the input. It was a vector. And I requested an output. And now the function printed. The mean of the input is 3, the sum is 15, the standard deviation is 1.5. And then it gave us our output, which is those three numbers. Normally, at this point, you would also want to test your code for errors by intentionally inputting data that should make the function crash. However, as I mentioned before, you'll need to learn a little bit more about MATLAB, and in particular control statements, before you can finish doing the input checks on this function. So let's stop here and be proud of our work. If you're happy with this function, you can print out the code and hang it up on your refrigerator. So in this video, I showed you how to create a function. The most important takeaway message from this video is that when writing a function or a script, before you really start writing even a single line of code, you should make a detailed and descriptive outline of everything you want the function to do and in what order. I also showed you how to check whether a potential variable name is already being used by an existing function.
I hope you found this instructive and see you in the next video.